Hi guys, this is Frenchie and today I invited the director Sam Kue for him to show you how he edited this commercial for the phone brand Techno with Motion VFX. So guys, this video is brought to you by Motion VFX. Motion VFX is the leading creator of plugins in DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro. They provide top quality tools for video editors and motion designers. So these plugins will make your video stand out even if you are professional or an amateur. So if you are following me on this channel for quite some time, you know that I really love Motion VFX and that I use Motion VFX consistently uh, on my YouTube videos, but also I am using Motion VFX for some editing projects for commercials. I love that they are providing dedicated packages, but also that within these packages, you have a big range of choices. To celebrate the Black Friday, you have 30% off on Motion VFX plugins until the 4th of December 2024 with the code BW30. Click in the link in the description to access the website. Let's watch the full commercial first and go straight to the tutorial. What makes us unstoppable? So here we are guys in our timeline, uh, I'm having Sam next to me, the director for this commercial that we have done. He's gonna show you like why he used some packages from Motion VFX and what were the purpose of this transition in the edit. Thank you Chloe for having me on. It's not like I do this very often. It's mostly just pre-production presentations, so... <laughs> and a lot of them on Zoom calls. So yeah, I, I think you were able to watch the project before we've come here, I'm assuming. I guess it's good to talk a little bit about the project first. So this is for Techno, it's for a phone brand. It's for the Southeast Asia market. So when we shot it, we wanted to make sure that it was ambiguous enough that you didn't know which sort of major city you were in, but you kind of knew the context of major cities, but also second cities. You know, it doesn't have to necessarily feel like Jakarta, it could feel like Surabaya. We just wanted to shoot people that looked like they came from here, but also had very interesting looks with different kind of passion points. So if you listen to the music, um, I also managed to dissect the music as well. And it, it's very energetic, but there, it almost feels like there are chapters. So even with the voiceover, you feel like there are different moments for you um, and for the audience to feel. So we shot with a few different cameras, but a lot of it was Alexa 35, which looks great off the bat. And, you know, Chloe being a colorist, I mean, she's done a really good job to make this feel very rich. Um, and, you know, and it's funny because it's commercial, but it can look really grungy. And, and that's kind of why Motion VFX was picked, right? Because I think Motion VFX has a lot of stuff that off the bat is very, very clean. So you've got this kind of effect that I think is really nice you know I think I think black and white gives a really nice texture and uh, and it already gives you that I mean I really didn't adjust that much so mm. if you look at it without the effect it's just a straight cut right but without even going into fusion or after effects you just you have that and that's I, I think that's brilliant right so then we have this other effect as well. So let me remove both of them. And you can kind of see, I mean, it, otherwise what would have been a very boring edit? I mean, it's not a boring edit. It's a nice edit because it was purposely jump cut and then putting just these two things back to back. I mean, I think a lot of effects sometimes they get a little bit crazy. I think motion VFX is gentle enough that it, it doesn't really 
distract you so much. Like, that's not very distracting for me. Mm -hmm. So, in this too, you use the Motion VFX music video uh, too. So, if, for example, you don't really know what kind of effects you put and you don't remember what is the title of your effect, you can just click on it and then like you have the title over here. So um, M Music Video 2 Film Mark uh, and also you have uh, another title with effect M Music Video 2 Film Marks. Uh, so this is how you can uh, see where you are. So um, he used the uh, film marks and also the second one is the flash zoom so you can find it in the package M Music Video 2. I mean things like here right like even from here to here it honestly didn't take me a lot of time to edit this film actually it almost took me like just a day and a half so like even here right I didn't I didn't necessarily use anything it's as simple as I could just drag and I could drop it here and you can see it's already super nice actually I should probably use this one here um, yeah, but it's pretty cool. And then you just shorten it and just like that. I mean, I, you know, I don't think films should rely on transitions. I think transitions are more like a dressing on top. So, oh, sorry. So it's like you have pancakes, but then it's nice to have syrup, right? And, and transitions are kind of like that for me. The film should be good without transitions. Like the, the film, even if I remove all the transitions, is super nice. But just having that sort of... I mean, that's really cool, right? So negative flashes, that's kind of cool. Yeah, but in the same package. Yeah, even this one, like the flicker flare mm. too. I think that was really nice. I mean, look at that. And then cut into something else. Yeah, that's quite cool. So, I mean, this is more a tip of editing, not that I'm the best editor in the world, but I think it's good to be strategic. If everything is doing it, then it just gets kind of disorientating, but, but just enough is nice. Like that's nice. Um, we have this, this one was interesting. So, for example, here, the music goes like bam, 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 right? So I wanted something that was quick when he stamps and breaks the, breaks his skateboard, right? Bam, bam, that's the sound effect. So I thought something that sort of had a mini build up with the grain, that's kind of nice. And then obviously this X at the time, poof, right? Bam, bam. So I think Motion VFX does something really cool where they give you a lot of things to adjust. They have stuff like you can change the color of the X. So if we kind of brighten it here a little bit. Yeah. And then we can sort of, yeah. So it was probably something like that before where you see you can really affect the way it glows. I mean, you can make it crazy like that. I mean, it's still kind of cool, but again, you know, I, I like effects where it doesn't really distract and it's more additive, right? So something like that is kind of nice. But bam, bam, you know, I think that's kind of cool. You can affect how the dirt size is. You know, you see these little lumpy bits. I mean, that's kind of cool too. Mm. Not that I, I mess around with it because off the bat, it's already pretty nice. Mm. You can change the, the blurring of it. Yeah. And it's very slight. Actually, maybe I should have blurred it. Actually, I, you know, honestly, I didn't dive quite into it as much as I should have. But there's a lot of things that we could change. Like even the dirt speed, like even if I blew it all up. There's just so much you can you can really do. Like we can get rid of the dirt, keep it clean, and then just let the squiggly bits be wherever the X is. This one is also in another package uh, because we saw the M Music Video too. This one is in the M Film Roll actually. So you can go just up. Uh, it's called the FR Neon Film Marks, and so you can just like find it. Uh, the, yeah, here. this one. Pretty cool. So if you want this uh, gritty look, so this is why you you chose yeah. it, right? I mean, there's there's a lot of really cool stuff. I mean, Chloe's marked it the the things that she's liked, which is good. Stuff like the negative. I I think the negatives are quite fun. Mm. So even if I even if I just use this, just drag and drop, I mean, it really makes the edit look kind of cool. Obviously, you can mon you can adjust it so it's not as crazy. You can just kind of shorten or lengthen it and it kind of automatically does that so i think for quick edits this is this is 10 out of 10 in my book this one's really nice i mean this kind of effect is pretty common like a lot of packs will give this to you for sure and they'll give you like a lot of variety and i think the problem not a problem i think the concern for a lot of packs is that 
they kind of overwhelm you with the amount of choices and templates and um, which is good because you want all the permutations, right? All the different variety and ways you can cut it together. But sometimes you just don't want to deal with that. And they just give you something s simple like that. This is the negative Q mark. And it, it's just enough to get you, get you to the right spot for the edit, you know? So here it's kind of like she's thinking, I kind of like from darkness to light, right? So this is, she's stepping in the shadow and then here she's sort of shadow side. Which, which I think is probably more subconscious than anything. I probably wasn't very conscious of that. But yeah, I mean, that's just, there's just so many ways to play around with this. And the nice thing about Resolve with it is you can come to a point where, okay, you know, we've got this basketball bit and then we've got this lady sort of in the, in the square, right? You can kind of just put your, whatever this thing is, mm -hmm. and you can just kind of scrub and see what it, what it would be doing. So I, for me in the edit, I just kind of drop it and say, oh, you know, I kind of like the way it's doing something. Mm. Right? I, I would probably shorten it because I don't want to pull too much attention. I would say, okay, you know, it's it's a bit too colorful. And then you can roll up to here. And then without even really understanding what you're doing, you can just kind of switch stuff off, <laughs> you know, and just see if you like that better. And maybe that is better, right? Because... Um, this blue line might be a, a little bit distracting or not really switch these two things off and then just watch it again and maybe that's cool maybe the darkness is kind of cool you know not too much light um, but we can put it back in and see I'm basically just kind of showing um, my sort of process like mm. it's just it's cool right like I just I just like that you can constantly mess around with this even even something like that I mean then but you discover it right you'll you'll mm. you'll get these motion VFX, you'll slap it on. And then you just kind of dingle around and be like, oh, I, I, maybe that's something that I like. Or maybe you don't like it, but you know, like, oh, okay, I can make a really colorful transition just by dragging this thing and popping it up there. And then you'll know that this transition is gonna be really good somewhere else in your edit, like here, right? So what if I just copied that? Now that I know it's colorful, this is a colorful shot. What if that becomes a great place to drop something colorful, right? Like that. And maybe maybe I like that. Maybe it's too much. I'll come back here, right, into the motion mm -hmm. VFX thing. And I say, I like the fact that it's colorful, but I think it's a bit much, so I can, I can tone it back down to something that's a bit halfway. And maybe you like that. There is also an effect that I really like that you used. Uh, is the one that... Uh, let me just take it and find it somewhere that was oh, this yeah. one yeah this one this one was pretty interesting because oh. you could like put a title on it so you got this bit into here right and so the voiceover says something like to get into the flow state and to feel free is, is the effect that we're going for so you got this bit that that is really nice right so if i remove that it's still nice mm. Right, but that that acid burn effect is is mm. cool. I mean, that's really nice. So this one also come from the film roll uh, package. The yeah. film roll package. I actually thought it was just one effect because I I stacked them pretty close to each other. I mean, it's not even a frame before the next one starts. You can just put motion, <laughs> right? And it's I mean that's nice. Yes, please. You know, you can do... <laughs> it's right? too big. So you can do a bit of brainwashing. Like, oh, what did what did it say? Why do I feel like subscribing? <laughs> That's weird, you know? Um, Obviously, <laughs> um, it can be something simple. Like, it can just be a, a plus. A plus, yeah. I like that you can customize it. So, go back to what we had, and just like that, it's already there. And... So a lot of transitions don't even have to be very long to be effective. I like the idea of something that's messy going into something clean. So you can you can really start stacking a lot of these things. I mean, they're all so nice. Like that's yeah. not bad. 
Yeah, just having something in front of the frame is kind of uh, cool. Yeah, this one is another package, <laughs> the movie, just like oh, because okay. I have uh, I have like other packages. Yeah. So basically, I just take what Chloe has, and then I just I go I I this is my process. I just go here, and I just start going over each one. Just to kind of see what they're doing. And I'm like, oh, okay, that was kind of cool. Like, this is kind of cool, actually. Yeah, you know, like yeah. a little Ooh. zoom in. That's kind of cool. And then I would come here and I'd say, you know, maybe I want to extend it by about four frames. And then that's really nice already. Yeah, that's pretty Oh, nice. my God. Okay, I got to write that one down, yeah. <laughs> oh, this is really nice. Yeah, wow. See, I would just... See? You're a filmmaker. Like yeah, and then just... <laughs> I mean that's nice, and then you add a bit of sound effect. That's that's really good. Like that. Have, that's exactly what I want. You should have told me because then, like, I would I would just have sent you this one. I mean, this is another one that I thought was. I mean, look at that, right? So if I, if I just remove that, I mean, you know, it's got a bit of speed mm -hmm. ramp, but that just makes it like I'm a really good editor, like. The fact that you get all of this and you can use it as many times as you want. I mean, even if you only like like six of them, I know that sounds ridiculous. But, I mean, you're going to like a lot of them. But even if you have like 10 of them that you, that you fall in love with and you keep using them on different projects, which I think a lot of them you can, because some of them are like just really simple flash cuts. I, I just like the idea that it saves you some mental space of like, oh, you know, having to create all these keyframes and um, all these speeds and all these shakes manually. And then knowing how to adjust the 10 that you like, it actually still opens up like a hundred different permutations of what you can do, even mm. if you only use 10. I like options of having a lot, but there will be some favorites like Chloe has done here that she's marked herself. And then just for the rest of your life, you know, you'll, you'll just be a really cool editor. And the more of these motion VFX that you have in front of you, and the, the, every day that you're editing and you're kind of just scrolling through them, you become more and more familiar. Like, obviously, I'm not really an editor. I just pretend to edit. So, but motion VFX makes me look like I'm a real pro. Um, so, don't make your life hard. Following someone like Chloe is really good because I think she's very real and insightful without the overly flashy sort of hype train that I think most of the internet is, which is not necessarily bad. I like real stuff and I think Chloe's very real and you know I use her for all my color grading jobs because I think she's fantastic so I think she's a real great resource and I mean she's a real colorist you know she doesn't she's a specialist in a field she doesn't shoot and, and things like that you know she she really dives deep into the the, the real nitty-gritty of of color grading which I think is really worth it if you want to master uh, a skill I think there's nothing wrong with being a, a, a jack of all trades. I mean, I kind of consider myself that as well. Um, but if you really want mastery, you're, you're well taken care of here. And I think the fact that she's able to talk about brands like Motion VFX, to be able to use it as well um, as a, a, a packaged editor, um, just goes to show how useful and powerful of a tool Motion VFX is. And I love it. Like I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of, of their work, and I think they're always sort of expanding. and And you want to be with a brand that is constantly developing, and because once you get used to the system and how they've created everything, um, you just get very familiar with how they are. So, I think growing with a brand like Motion VFX is sort of the right place if you're editing or if you're a, a, a one man band videographer. Um, on top of following Chloe yes. for, <laughs> yeah. for grading. Yeah. Also, I'm just thinking, guys, um, maybe we can do another video to show you how I made the color grading for Techno with Sam because then uh, we can see his point of view as a director for color grading. And I think it could be really fun. What I do think you think? That's a good idea. Yeah, why not, you yeah. know? That, that would be fun, that would be fun to do it. So just let me know in the comments if you are interested. Uh, don't forget that you have 30% um, off during this uh, week uh, on Motion VFX with the code BW30. And uh, you can click in the link in the description to access to Motion VFX. And yeah, 
thank you so much guys for watching the video until the end and i see you for next video see you